da 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 we are going to talk about chapter 7 have you heard of brahmin and fireside poets they were two groups of american romantics who wrote very simple conservative poetry they were from new england and they did not experiment with poetry okay they wrote according to standard mainstream poetic meters and rhythms and their poetry was very recitable their poetry is full of images of domesticity and comfort across england and europe people were reciting their poems at this time even today in school children still recite h w longfellow etc the brahmin poets are called brahmin poets originally as a derogatory name because they pretended to be upper class like the indian brahmans later the name stuck the brahmin poets uh, are aristocratic and culturally elite you know in their writing that is why they were called by this name john greenleaf whittier oliver wendell holmes h w longfellow you might have heard these names they are very important famous poets some of them are also called fireside poets fireside poets have two other names school room poets or household poets very rhythmic beautiful poems they sang and some of the fireside poets wrote long narrative poems shall i tell you some names you might be familiar with them h w longfellow's evangeline and the tale of akedi the song of hayavada these are long narrative poems of h w longfellow then there is john greenleaf whittier's home bound oliver wendell holmes wrote old iron sides all famous you should look them up i was just checking out some of the easily recitable poems in google and i thought i will share with you one of them it is a simple poem called the rainy day by h w longfellow the day is cold and dark and dreary it rains and the wind is never weary the vine still clings to the moldering wall but at every gust the dead leaves fall and the day is dark and dreary that is one stanza you can sing it in any tune that you want i just sang in a tune that came to my mind that's all but the thing is when you sing you know there is meter otherwise you can't sing the tala or rhythm should be at regular intervals only then you can sing also when you sing it is easy to remember that is why it is recitable did you understand so the first author we are talking about in this group of poets is william cullen bryant or a he was so old he was born at the end of the 18th century 1794 but these poets wrote in the brilliant age of emerson thoreau walt whitman nathaniel hawthorne etc william cullen bryant you might know is known for thanatopsis very famous poem it is a graveyard poem from america thanatopsis this poem came in 1817 and here he is meditating on death and nature he is talking about death as natural and unavoidable very famous poem thanatopsis it also tries to forge an american history then another famous poem is there by william cullen bryant it is to a water fowl that is prescribed in some universities his poetry has a very meditative character reflective character 
Did you know guys, William Cullen Bryant also edited a very successful book called Picturesque America. Look it up, it is important or it is discussed in the encyclopedia also. Letters of a Traveler, another important book by William Cullen Bryant. The next important writer is John Greenleaf Whittier. John Greenleaf Whittier was born in 1807. He was just younger than Emerson. And he wrote an anti-slavery pamphlet called Justice and Expediency. Snowbound a winter idyll. This is a beautiful poem where a family is sharing stories of rural life and domesticity. Very nostalgic stories of a bygone era. Beautiful poem it is. Snowbound a winter idyll. There are excerpts given of these poems in the encyclopedia. You can also check out in Google. And now we have the very famous writer H.W. Longfellow. Born in the same year as John Greenleaf Whittier in 1807. He was a poet as well as an educator. Did you know guys he translated Dante's Divine Comedy. The first American to do that. He has written many simple poems that are very famous like The Village Blacksmith. You might have studied that in school sometimes. I have studied it I think. The Village Blacksmith. It is a very popular poem about the daily life of a local blacksmith in a village. I already mentioned Evangeline, a tale of Acadie. It is the story of an Acadian girl. What is Acadian? It is a Native American tribe, Acadie, Acadian tribe. And Evangeline is a girl from this uh, tribe and she's searching for her lost lover. Evangeline is a very important book that talks about Native American history and identity in the 19th century. Then there is the epic poem, The Song of Hayavada. It is a very interesting story, guys. Hayavada, the protagonist, is a very strong and wise Native American who loves and marries another Native American woman. He teaches his people to read and write. But then his wife dies and white men arrive in his village. At that time, he leaves his village never to return. So this story of Hayavada is like an objective correlative of what happened to Native American people. There is another important poem, Paul Rivers Ride. H.W. Longfellow is important. I wish you would do extra research. Paul Rever was an American patriot. And this poem is about that man, Paul Rivers Ride. The next writer among this group of poets is Oliver Wendell Holmes. He was born in 1809, the same year as Alfred Tennyson. And he was a physician, a humorist, a poet and a polymath. What is a polymath? A polymath is a man with a variety of knowledges, lots of knowledge. Emerson was a polymath. Matthew Arnold was a polymath. Thomas Carlyle was a polymath. And Oliver Wendell Holmes wrote a series of essays called Breakfast Table Series of Essays. I already mentioned his long poem, Old Ironsides. That is very important. It's about a warship in the 18th century. The government was planning to destroy that warship and he wrote against it. Old Ironsides. The title itself will help you remember. It's about a warship. Then guys, James Russell Lovell. Have you heard that name? James Russell Lovell wrote a series of satirical poems. All his poems are satirical, I think. The Big Low Papers, The Fable for Critics, etc. In net and set exams, it is possible that you will get a question from the uh, fireside poets or the Brahmin poets especially H.W. Longfellow. For any thorough understanding of American literature, you should know about these poets and you should read their original works, some of them at least, parts of it at least. If you want, you can use the Encyclopedia of the Literature of the Americas in two volumes brought out by Bodhi Tree. 
Otherwise, you can do your own research also. Whether you buy this book or not, you have to do your research. Because in Nettin said these days, as you know, there is a very research-oriented approach. The importance of this encyclopedia is that we have collected information from many important books on American literature. So reading this encyclopedia will be like reading many important books. It is all in, given in a nutshell. And it will give you a very thorough foundation for developing your knowledge on this subject. Guys, if you study British literature, American literature and all these literatures and theories thoroughly, get the foundation right, you will easily pass net set and such exams in a breeze. The exams themselves are not difficult. They require thorough knowledge, that is all. So, happy learning. I will keep on giving you guidance to become excellent professors. In this year, when you are studying all this, I'm sure you will pass important exams and the foundation of your career will be laid. So, professors, I'm signing out for now. Continue your learning. I'll be back with chapter 8 on the Civil War in America. Very important chapter.